Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, we're going to take a second look at Golanx's SF Masterworks. This is a follow-up to my first video on this topic. First, we're going to look at a comment by Stephen E. Andrews, the Outlaw Bookseller, about this very video. In it, he provides some valuable information and corrections for the first video. I did pin this comment. Secondly, we'll take a look at some additional research that I've done in the beginning of the series. And thirdly, I've created a database of the series, and I'll show you some images from that database. There will be an opportunity for you to download some lists. I'll create chapters for these three sections in the video. So let's get started. Here's the thumbnail for my first video. You might want to watch it to get some context for this video, although it's not necessary. Hi Richard. A few technical points and additional detail read the Masterworks series, which I'm sure you've seen me speak of on my channel, but I felt viewers here might appreciate a few of these points. Apologies if any of this seems pedantic, but if all SF booktubers were singing from the same hymn book, we'd all find clear communication and sharing of information and pleasure around SF easier and more fulfilling. Number one. The yellow livery is, of course, based on Golanx's standard hardcover jacket livery from the 1960s to the late 1980s, at which point they began to issue books in pictorial jackets more regularly. The first yellow jacket SF novel was Ballard's The Drowned World, though Golanx had published the odd SF book as far back as the 1960s. Golanx's serious commitment to SF of quality, above all other publishers in the UK hardcover market, resulted in their holding the copyright licenses to a huge number of modern SF classics, hence the authority of the Masterworks line. Their crime novels also had yellow liveries. Number 2. The 86-87 classic SF line was issued in B format also, but at that time, the number of specialist SFF shops in the UK was quite high, and they generally had their bookcase shelving set up for A format books, since genre SF in B format was uncommon then. This resulted in the series going to A format and being retitled VGSF and acquiring more traditional SF jacket designs while continuing the numbering from the classic SF line. Number three, the original black masterworks were accompanied by around a dozen hardcover format editions in demi size, which were jacketed, these were Roman numeral numbered and had white jacket spines, and often different artwork to their paperback equivalents. And some of them were licensed from other publishers, such as The Day of the Triffids, and consequently have never appeared in Masterworks in any paperback livery. I have several of these, and you will have seen them in my videos. Number four, the correct term for hardcovers with illustrative covers without a jacket is laminated boards or where there is no laminate, decorated boards. Number five, the correct term for the collections of novels is of course omnibus. Collections should be used strictly for short stories by a single author under one cover. Number six, the Golden Age masterworks are an example of how far editorial standards have slipped at Golanx. I recorded a video about two years ago entitled, Not So Golden Age After All, in which I analyzed the publication dates of all the titles, and fewer than half of them are Golden Age, from 1939 to 1950. Two of the C.L. Moore titles predate the Golden Age, and the Harry Harrison ones appeared in the 1960s, which is quite frankly absurd. There is no real debate around when the Golden Age started, see the SF Encyclopedia, only around its end, between 1946 to 1950. As you've read Astounding, the bio of Campbell, Hubbard, Van Vogt, and Heinlein, I know you'll be aware of this. Number seven. Finally, Golanx were, for many decades, a publisher of all kinds of fiction and nonfiction, and only survived exclusively as an SF imprint from around 20 years ago. They ceased to be fully independent in the late 80s and early 90s, from what I recall. Thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate how you're making sure that the correct information is out there. And now, let's take a look at how the SF Masterworks series began. 
The SF Masterworks were originally launched in January 1999 by Malcolm Edwards, then Managing Director of Orion Books, now Chairman of Golanx. He launched the Landmark series to bring important books back into print. Edwards was advised by luminaries of the genre, such as George R.R. R. Martin, Arthur C. Clarke, Terry Pratchett, and Ursula K. Le Guin. In a Locus interview printed March of 2005, he says, Entering a new job, it's the only time in your working life when you actually have any time. Your desk is empty, and there you are. That's when I decided to do the SF Masterworks list. I looked around and realized, far more than I had before, how much had gone out of print in the UK. The day I discovered both Bester's The Stars My Destination and Haldeman's The Forever War were out of print, I thought, there's a list here. And when we bought Golanx, this is Orion, and when we bought Golanx, we immediately put the SF lists, both fairly small at that time, together. In 2000, we closed down the general part of Golanx, and it became our dedicated SF and fantasy list. When researching the SF Masterworks, I found to my surprise that there weren't really any good lists of the books. Perhaps the best list came from Wikipedia. I decided to make my own spreadsheet. I entered all the books that I could find in both Series 1 and Series 2. Much of that was an overlap. And I came up with 198 books, including two books that are going to be published soon. In July, Maureen Duffy's Firstborn will be printed, and in September, Sterling Lanier's The Unforsaken Hero, the second book in the Hero Saga. You can find a review for Hero's Journey on this channel. This spreadsheet is a work in progress. Column A is simply a count of the number of books. Column B is an alphabetical listing of the authors. Column C is an alphabetical listing of the books by that author. Column D shows Series 2, the Yellow Spine series. You can see if there's a hardcover, and you can also see if there's a book missing that was in Series 1. For example, J.G. Ballard's The Drowned World. Column E shows the Black Spine first series of the SF Masterworks. These books were numbered. In column F, wherever there's a blank, you can assume that it's a novel. Otherwise, I do identify short stories, whether it's collections or anthologies, and omnibus. That's a number of books within one book. Just to be clear, when it comes to short stories, a collection is all by one author, and an anthology are short stories by multiple authors. An anthology is usually identified by its editor's name. For example, Harlan Ellison is the editor of Dangerous Visions, an anthology with many authors' short stories. I plan to add another column with the copyrights for these books. With this spreadsheet as a database, now I can create other tables. Once I filled in the copyright dates, I could create a table that has the books in order of original publication. One table I've created is the first series of the SF Masterworks. Here I've created a table based on the numbers that you can find on the spines. Note that number 24, H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, and The War of the Worlds was printed as one book. It is now separate in the Yellow Spine second series. Also note that the last three are hardcovers. My understanding is that in the UK, the paperback rights for these books belong to another company, so Golanx claimed the hardcover rights to print these three books. You'll see something similar in the Yellow Spine series as well. So I've taken this database and created a couple of lists, visuals that you can use. You can find a link for visuals for series one and also for my spreadsheet in the description of this video. I will also pin a comment with those links. I'm posting them on my website, vintagesf.ca. The .ca is for Canada. If you're curious, you can take a look at the website. I've sorted out my videos by year.
and you can also find some previous cartoon work that I did. So let's take a look at the visual I created for the spreadsheet itself. This one is two pages long. On the second page, I have some notes. This list is alphabetical by author last name and then by book title. The books are paperbacks and less noted hardcover, and you can see that in column three. You might notice in the yellow column for series two that H.G. Wells has both hardcover and paperback editions. The first series from 1999 to 2007 had black numbered spines, and you can see those in column five. You can also see the numbering for the series. The second series, which is 2010 to the present, have yellow and white spines with no numbers, and that's in column four. J.G. Ballard's The Drowned World and Philip K. Dick's Now Wait for Last Year appear in the first series, but not in the second series. And finally, once again, H.G. Wells' The Time Machine and The War of the Worlds are one book in the first series, number 24. So there you have it for today. Don't forget to look at the description for this video for a link to Stephen E. Andrews' channel, The Outlaw Bookseller. You'll also find a link to my website, vintagesf.ca, where I've placed some lists of SF masterworks. You can just left click on the picture or its caption to see a full image. A download option is available. So until next time, keep reading those masterworks.